Let's continue on with our survey of our ag commodity markets. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. Man, I sure enjoy talking with you about our ag commodity trade each and every day. And uh, the grain markets are kind of interesting today in what they're doing or not doing. For example, Exhibit A, let's look at the corn board here, and it just has not been doing much of anything up to this point. It's just been floating along, not going anywhere. March corn is now just a little bit weaker. We're down two and a half, now two and a quarter cents at 474 and a quarter. Well, that would be just a tick from our low of the range, but it's been a very quiet range all day. December corn for next year, down two. It's at 504 and a half. So a little bit of weakness in the corn. On the soybean trade, now they're starting to sag, let's say. Let's have the March at 1313 and three quarters. Well, that would now be down six and three quarter cents on the day. And yeah, we're sliding about 14 cents off of our overnight high. Keep an eye on that one. It's starting to lose ground, especially on the nearby contracts. Now on the wheat, Chicago wheat hanging right in there with March nine and a quarter higher. We're at 632 and a quarter. And that would put us about four cents from our earlier high of the day. Your July is gaining eight and a half cents today. On the Kansas City market, you have the March contract now eight and a quarter higher. We're at 643 and a quarter. And July is six and a quarter higher. We're at 646 and a quarter. Well, let's see if Minneapolis can follow suit. On the Minneapolis wheat, we have March three higher. We're at 724 and three quarters. July is up six. In cotton, the March contract has been ducking around above and below unchanged. For the time being, <laughs> March is 10 points higher at 80.63 per pound, not doing too much of anything. The crude oil market has been a little bit weaker today. February now down $1.17, so it's like it's taken another leg lower. And now we're under $73 a barrel at $72.94. Uh, didn't quite see that one coming with uh, all the stuff going on in the Middle East, but uh, there you are, under 73 bucks. Tommy Grisafi joins us now. Oh, my goodness. Tommy Grisafi with Advanced Trading. Always a treat to talk with you, Tommy. It looks like you're in Valpo today, Valparaiso, Indiana. So, yeah, I got my pajamas on, just yeah. wearing a sweatshirt. Good. <laughs> Could, couldn't muster up a dress shirt today. Yeah, it's it's a good thing the camera's aimed high here. So uh, what is the deal today anyway? Everybody fall asleep at the switch on the corn or what? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. When I woke up this morning, I thought we had a good chance of uh, rallying, and we're just not seeing that the wheat's rallying, and I can't exactly sit here and say I know why. Uh, we had that one day that was obvious where crude rallied and wheat rallied, and there was a problem with the shipping in the Middle East and Suez Canal and all that. But uh, just recently in the last few, about the last hour, we just got soft a little bit in corn and beans and just a lack of interest. Overall, markets are extremely quiet. I would expect some volatility into tomorrow's close, especially into the markets that have had the biggest moves recently. Watch cattle and feeder cattle tomorrow on the close. They could become quite violent. I've seen that where at the end of the year, someone puts a big position or exits a big position right in the last few minutes, a little bit of fund uh, readjusting. One other thing to think about is uh, look at your commodities that were down hard on the year. There'll be a rebalancing. Sometimes you see those catch a bit at the beginning of the year. And then the commodities that were up big on the year, you see some people selling those. So you'll see people selling the things that were up, buying things that were down as we rebalance into 2024. I'm somewhat optimistic about 2024, and that's only because recently the dollar has been so weak. So a lot of dollar weakness here uh, in the last few months as we're right at the 100 level. Back to you, my friend. Yeah, that's some great points you bring up there. Now, I wanted to ask you about the fact that uh, this morning we've heard a lot of talk about increasing moisture in South America, especially in Brazil. And we know that they're going to have just huge acreage this year. And I guess I understand that's why it's probably pressuring the soybean futures here this morning to some extent. But is that also what's pulling the corn market down a little bit? Are they thinking that maybe now they'll have more safrina corn after all? You know, from the South American point, with the map of where we plant crops down there has become so big. So when a weather person or an analyst puts, uh, oh, it's dry in this area, they forget to show you all the places that are getting moisture. And I guess the question I have to ask myself or educate clients on is, do we are we going to have enough grain? Overall, the world has enough grain right now. America has a lot of grain. I just spoke to a local uh, client, and he said, what should I sell at the beginning of the year, corn, wheat, or beans? And I looked at all three of his cash markets. And for this individual, his cash markets are extremely weak. 
in all three markets. So that is a sign that there is plenty of grain in the United States. And with moisture, to your point, with moisture in South America, there'll be plenty of grain in the world and that will most likely get us lower prices. Oh boy, yeah, and considering where we are, I mean, one has to wonder just what potentially the bottom could be in the corn and beans. Ooh. All right, well, we'll pause here. And on that note, Tommy, we'll come back and take a look at our livestock trade after this. On the livestock side, now let's visit this on the live cattle futures, shall we? The live cattle were trading mixed earlier today. Not anymore. They have decided they want to go southward. We have February live cattle currently at 168.12. That would be uh, down a dollar and 15 cents on the day and only about a dime, not even a dime from our low of the day now. April is down to 137 at 171.60. So that's a nickel from its low of the day. Everything kind of given up here the way it looks on the feeder cattle market today. Well, we had uh, two or three contracts that were over $2 lower last time we looked. Now you have the March down 207. It's at 223.32, but the April is down, should I say, only $1.80 at 229.10 after a high of 231 even this morning. So, man, we gave back uh, almost $2 on that one. If you look at lean hogs, lean hogs traded higher early and they failed. And you have February going down $1.72 now. We're at 68.15 right now, just a dime from our low of the day. And gosh, way over $2 off of our earlier high. We have four contract months now. The first four months are all at least a dollar or more to the downside. So Tommy, everything's just really getting weak in the knees as we get closer to the finish line here today. What's at work here in the livestock trade? I think overall, when you look back, we did a, a little morning show uh, amongst ourselves here at Advanced Trading, and I think you'll realize that 2023 was the year that commodities lost their luster. Uh, the one commodity that still has a luster is gold, but you know, folks on this show may own a few ounces or people watching this show, but this is a commodity show, and corn, beans, wheat, uh, cattle are still up in the year. Feeders are still up in the year. Hog market just not looking good, and you see things like Bitcoin on fire and you see things like the stock market is up uh, 23, 24% on the year. Half of those gains are just in the last two months. And you can put your money in a CD. You can still get about 5% at local banks in a CD. So there's a lot of choices on where you can put money and possibly make a return. Commodities are not in favor right now. And a big part of that is because the Federal Reserve. When the, when the Fed took their foot off the gas and the markets priced in five rate cuts, that actually shows that we're not inflating and people bought commodities as that inflation hedge. We could actually be deflating goods and services across the world. What if the Black Sea and the Red Sea become uh, unaccessible or inaccessible, I should say, and it, it, uh, that, that shuts down trade? What does that mean for the U.S. with the economy and maybe demand on livestock and grain? It's not good. Anytime you have a disruption uh, of a rail, of a river, of uh, ports like that, it's not good. Initially, we see markets go up, but then when you take a step back and think about it, it's really not good. If people can go days, weeks, months without buying your product or getting it shipped to them, they don't exactly get caught up on those goods. Look at reflecting back the last few years, look how much the world adapted to not uh, buying grain from Ukraine. They just went to other places. And Disruptions are never good for uh, long-term sales of anything, my friend. All righty. Uh, and just to remind everybody, we did not have the weekly export sales data out this morning. Because we had a holiday on Monday, that means we'll get all those numbers out tomorrow morning on Friday morning. And then uh, we'll rinse and repeat and do that again next week where they'll come out next Friday as well because New Year's Day happens to fall on uh, a Monday next week. So, Tommy, thanks for everything. Thank and, you. Happy uh, New Year. Happy New Year to you and yours. Thanks for all the reports you provide during the year. I know from your various locations, I appreciate that very much. So all the best to you. Thank you, Tommy. Tommy Grisafi with us. He's with Advanced Trading in Valparaiso, Indiana, here this Thursday morning. So, Suzanne.